In 1896, the Italian economist Wilfredo Pareto made the observation that 80% of the land in Italy was owned by the richest 20% of the population. This is the Pareto Principle. As a general concept now, the Pareto Principle refers to the idea that pulling the right lever can result in a cascade, the few that causes the many. A portion of this video is sponsored by 365 Data Science, who is offering two weeks free on their entire platform. Link in description and more about them later. Let's set the scene. Lily and Sammy are both entry-level data analysts at ABC Company. Lily wakes up at 7 a.m., refreshed from a good night's sleep, goes for a morning run, eats a healthy home-cooked breakfast, and comes to the office on time at 9 a.m. During the day, she finishes one project and moves forward with two important stakeholders to take the lead on a huge project worth $20 million absolutely unheard of for someone with only one year of experience. She then enjoys a leisurely lunch with a few coworkers. She works for a couple more hours and leaves at 5 p.m. with all of her work done, and even a little bit more, even though most of her colleagues are still at the office grinding away until 7 to 8 p.m., including Sammy. Now, Sammy on the same morning woke up at 8.30 a.m. to his incessantly beeping alarm clock, feeling groggy and tired from working late last night until 9 p.m. He snoozes two times until 8.45 a.m., Realizes he's late, jumps out of bed, brushes his teeth, and rushes to work, arriving at 9.30 a.m. Late, as always. During the day, he grinds on an entry-level project that he's been working on for months, but there just doesn't seem to be an end to it. He looks over at Lily, jealous and kind of bewildered by how she manages to get everything done and yet always seems put together as well. He thinks to himself, am I just stupid? So. What do you think is the difference between Lily and Sammy? Here's a hint. It's not IQ or even EQ. It was multiple clever applications of the Pareto principle that produced compounding results. I'll explain exactly how this works later in the video. But first, what is the Pareto principle and how does it work? Pareto himself originally observed that approximately 80% of the land in Italy was owned by the richest 20% of the population. But this is not just limited to lands. For example, if you're trying to build up your strength and your muscles, the most effective exercises are compound exercises that stimulate multiple muscle groups. For example, squats, deadlifts, bench press. Now there are of course a bunch of other exercises you can do, like bicep curls, leg extensions, lateral races, tricep pull-downs, dumbbell flies, etc, etc, etc. And of course they do help in increasing your strength, but not by that much. You see, a approximately 80% of the results you get will be from only 20% of the exercises. Now entering into the world of luxury brands like Louis Vuitton and Hermes. These brands have a ton of different merchandise like keychains, scarves, clothing, fragrances, belts. But what really brings in the money are these luxury designer bags. For example, the LV Speedy and Neverfull and the Hermes Birkin and Kelly's. In fact, to try to get people to buy more of the other things that the stores offer, oftentimes you have to pre-qualify to even buy one of these bags by buying a bunch of other things first. For example, if you want to buy a Hermes Birkin, you have to first like buy a scarf, buy some keychains, buy a wallet, some of the other bags as well. And after you do all those things in order to prove your loyalty to the brand, then they might give you the opportunity to buy a Birkin, which is insane because you're essentially having to prove yourself to spend tens of thousands of dollars on a bag. But anyways, anyways, sorry, I digress. Yes, 80% of the revenue is brought in by 20% of the merchandise. 80% of complaints come from 20% of the customers. Well. I would like to speak to your manager. 80% of a harvest come from 20% of the seeds. 80% of the football team's score comes from 20% of its players. So you probably get my point now how widespread the application of the Pareto principle is. And just to make a note, it doesn't need to be exactly 80-20. Sometimes the ratios are like 90-10, we're like 70-30, but the concept remains. So the next question is, how do you actually identify the 20% um, of key levers that will allow you to unlock 80% of the results? Here's what we know. A Washington state resident fell ill after returning from Wuhan, China, where the outbreak began. It's February of 2020. The COVID lockdown is creeping into the city of Philadelphia. All the libraries, coffee shops, restaurants, and my school, the University of Pennsylvania, has shut down. But at that moment, there was only one thing on my mind. I had a data science interview with Facebook in 11 days, in which four of the seven interviews was in SQL. 
I did not know any SQL. By the way, in case you're not familiar, SQL is a language that is commonly used for manipulating data that is usually required for anybody working with data, like data scientists, data analysts, or data engineers. Not super important, but just so you know. Anyways, I was in a lot of trouble because this was the last company that I had an interview with and I hadn't landed any offers yet. Especially with COVID kicking in, a lot of companies weren't even interviewing or hiring anymore, which was exceptionally dire for me as an international student because if I don't find a job soon, they would kick me out of the country. So step one, identify desired results. Past interview, get job, not get kicked out of country. Step two, identify time frame, 11 days. Step three, identify the variables. What variable contributes the most towards the result that I want to have? Well, in this case, since the goal is to pass the interview, if you break it down, it's essentially my ability to learn the different SQL functions um, in order to answer the question correctly. But the problem is that there are a lot SQL functions and SQL concepts. Like people have written entire books, hours and hours of classes, like entire certificates dedicated to SQL. So step four is the crucial step. It is to rank and to prioritize. I had 11 days. Like clearly I did not have time to read entire books or to do full courses or certificates. So I prioritized learning the most common concepts and functions that showed up in the interviews. So how did I do this? Well, from day one to four. So I spent four entire days just looking at Glassdoor where people post their interview questions for specific companies. In my case, I was looking specifically at data science interviews at Meta. Facebook. So I scrolled through and went through every single question and compiled them together into a spreadsheet. I then rank the questions based upon how common it is for it to show up as an interview question. With this list now from most common to least common, I pulled out the concepts and the functions that showed up. For example, understanding the concept of the base SQL query uh, was extremely important. While on the other hand, like database manipulations and like schemas and things like that were not that common for data science interviews. A lot of the joins, like the left joins, right joins, full joins, they were really, really common, but window functions were not that common. Okay, so now I have that list of what it is that's most important to learn. And from day five to 11 is when I actually started learning. So then I just pretty much went down that list. So the first thing I had to learn was the base structure of a query. So from a certain table, I'm pulling out and selecting a certain amount. Then learn about how filtering works, how to change between data types, how the joins work and so on and so forth. So in those seven days, I made it down around like one third of the list of things that I had to know. So there was a bunch of it, like two thirds of it that I basically didn't know anything about, but it was okay. And I passed interviews, I got the job and I moved to California. Happy ending. So I didn't know at that time, but I was basically using the Pareto principle in order for me to land that job. And if I didn't use it, there was no way I could have gotten that job. So hopefully now you can see the power of the Pareto principle but I haven't even shown you the full extent of it yet. Let's go back to Lily and Sammy. So someone like Lily has really mastered the Pareto principle and it just seems like she can do everything faster, but it's really just the process of applying the principle over and over again across many different aspects of her life. For example, as a data analyst, one of her first tasks would be to do analysis to help determine whether a company should be pursuing a new opportunity or not. In this case, Lily would choose to do a rather simple analysis that would account for 80% of the final results, like 80 percent accurate and she could put in more effort and time to make the results more accurate but really 80 percent is enough to make that decision and to move on to the next thing there are very few things in life that actually need you to be perfect hashtag not surgery advice but that's not all since you're able to finish a task so much faster you now have more time you can choose to spend that on other levers that can boost your productivity and your quality of life for example you can choose some of that extra time on working out which as we learned earlier doesn't actually need to take one to two hours because you know if you're doing the 20% most effective exercises you would be able to get 80% of the benefits of better mood, increased health, um, increased energy levels, which again, in turn, means that you're gonna be able to work on things even faster, be more energetic, be healthier and happier. It's basically like this big compounding positive effect. Even if you're 1% more efficient than everybody else around you, in the long run, that difference is huge. I was talking earlier about passing those rounds of SQL interviews, right? So that was a very difficult process of me having to manually go through all of the questions, compile them together, et cetera, et cetera. 
So after I did that, 365 Data Science actually approached me and asked me if I wanted to make a course. And I thought that would be perfect course to make, which is 10 full mock interviews of what is the most representative of interview questions for data science. So if you're someone who's interested in pursuing data science, doing those specific mock interviews would save you a lot of time and it would be the application of the Pareto principle. So that course and all the other courses I made, they're on the 365 Data Science learning platform. There are now in total over 65 courses spanning the data sphere and the business and analytics sphere. They also offer study tracks if you're particularly interested in pursuing like a data analyst role or a data scientist role. Now, the most exciting part is that they're offering their entire platform for free for two weeks, starting on November 6th. So if you're interested at all in data and business fields, do not miss this opportunity to try out their entire platform for free. Check out the link in the description for how to access this deal. Thank you again to 365 Data Science for making this incredible offer and sponsoring this video. And I will see you guys in the next video and live stream.